I do not take it lightly, and I thank you for your prayers, and I thank you for just being present today. The atmosphere has already been set. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise for that. The atmosphere has already been set. Yamisha, I thank you for being obedient to the Lord. I thank you for being obedient to what the Lord has placed in your heart to do. I was up there and I was singing and I said, Lord, send your prophet. <laughs> Lord, send your prophet. And I thank you for being obedient to what God has called you to do. Father, we give you the glory and all the praise and all the honor and all that you're going to do today and all that you already have done. We magnify you and we give you the glory. We thank you for being God. I thank you, Father, for your spirit being here today, for speaking to us today, Father, for protecting us and keeping us and giving us your glory, your favor, your mercy, your peace. We just honor you and thank you, Father. Father, I pray that now that you would speak through me and that I pray, Lord God, that you will open the ears and the hearts of your people that they may receive what it is that you would have them to receive today. I honor you and I thank you. In the name of Yeshua, amen. But church, you all got a good ocarina coming. Can, I, can you put that title up there? You didn't, you didn't. The title of the message is, You've Got a Good Akari Coming. Now, some of you might know what Akari means. Okay, all right. For you all that don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're going to know today before you leave what Akari means. The Lord says you have a good Akari coming. And it was, it was already um, spoken earlier, and when Yamisha was prophesying and everything, we all got a good Akari coming. All right. My text is coming from it's coming from Jeremiah 29. So if you all can turn to that, I'm going to read it from the Greek, the Hebrew Greek study Bible. And it's from verses 1 through verse 17 of Jeremiah 29:11. So just keep in mind now, you got a good Akari coming. All right, all right. Let me just set this up for you. Now, Jeremiah, we know Jeremiah is a prophet. Jeremiah is in Jerusalem, and the children of Israel have been taken away and taken into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon. But Jeremiah is still in Jerusalem, and so he's prophesying to those who have been captive. And he's telling them what the Lord says. And this is what the Lord is saying, starting at verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are or were cap carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Be, listen to this. I have cause to be carried away. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and be set, beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. So that they may bear sons and daughters. That you may be increased there and not diminished. Now they're in captivity. And seek the peace of the, of the city where I have caused you to be carried away. There it is again. I have caused you to be carried away. And pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace you will have peace. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you. Nor listen to your dreams which you call which you are caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name, and I have not sent them, says the Lord. But thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to be returned to this place. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, 
thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then I will call up, then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Verse 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search with me with all your heart. Verse 14, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations, like uh, Deacon uh, Greg was calling forth this morning, bringing forth all the nations from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to a place which I will cause you to be I will bring you from the place which I have caused you to be carried away captive. That's a lot. But basically, I want you to keep in mind that the Lord is saying that we have a good archery coming. Just keep that in your mind. Now I'm going to unpack some of that we just read. Okay? Keep in mind, you got a good archery coming. You know the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. Some of the promises he tells us to trust in him with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, and he will direct your path. That's a promise of the Lord. Another promise is that he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He said if John 15, 7 says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. That's a promise of the Lord. The Lord said, if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petition that we have placed before him. That's a promise of the Lord. The promises of the, of the Lord are yes and amen. But sometimes we think, well, Lord, if your promises are yes and amen, why am I in this mess that I'm in? Why are things happening in my life that I don't understand? Why do I feel like I, I am in captivity? Sometimes the Lord will lead you into a place so he can reveal himself to you or he can reveal you to yourself. Sometimes he, he wants to reveal you to yourself or he wants to reveal himself to you. So don't let somebody tell you that because you are saved and you delivered and you sanctified and you speaking in tongues that you shouldn't have any problems. Sometimes we have problems because the Lord is allowing us to see ourselves or he wants to show us who he truly is. So he may, it may seem like you're in captivity. It may seem like you're going through a hard time, but there's a reason behind it because what? You got a good aquarium coming. You got a good archery, okay? We have to keep that in our minds. Whatever's going on in our lives, don't let people tell you, you know, that you shouldn't have to go through this. You know, you saved. You delivered. Why are you dealing with stuff? There's a reason for it. But we have a good archery coming. Now, if we go back to verse 4 and unpack some of this. In verse 4, if you look at it, what, what it's saying, the Lord is talking through Jeremiah, and he's telling the people that are in captivity that I have caused you to be carried away. I have, see, the Lord allows some things to happen in our lives, and we can't defute that, and we can't say that that's not of God. Sometimes, think of Pharaoh, what he did to, <laughs> he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did it. Okay? That's what the scripture says. And so here the Lord is saying, I caused them to go into captivity because of their disobedience. How many times that we have been not in line with the, Lord of, with the word of the Lord and have caused ourselves to be in places where we may not should have been? Okay? But he said, I caused. And if you look at that Hebrew word, the phrase, I have caused to be carried away. That phrase is one Hebrew word, and it's called gala. Gala. And it is, if you want to look it up in the uh, Concordance, it's 1540. It's a root word, and it means to reveal, to be revealed, to uncover, to remove, to reveal oneself, to expose or to disclose. So what the Lord was saying is, that I caused them to go into captivity so I can reveal something to them. Sometimes we are in places that we shouldn't be or we think we shouldn't be. It's because the Lord is trying to reveal something to us. 
He's trying to show us ourselves or he's trying to show himself to you. The Lord is a loving God. He, he doesn't do anything without a reason. So when I was reading this, I was like, well, why would you do that, Lord? And then in, in my Bible here, it gives me the, the Hebrew word for that phrase. See, remember, Pastor would tell us there are so many English words, but it's on, it can be only one Hebrew word. <laughs> That's what it is here. Cause to be carried away is a phrase, but the Hebrew word for that phrase is gala, which means to reveal. So the Lord led them into captivity, like he sometimes leads us into places so he can reveal himself to us. Okay? So he can reveal himself, or he can reveal ourselves to who we are, what we've done, what we haven't done, where we've been in life, and what we need to do to come up. So that's why they went into captivity, for their disobedience, but the God is a loving God. He's not going to do something just because he's mean, because I was like, Lord, why would you do that? But if, see, and you don't get this by reading the King James. That's not up there. But when you go to the Hebrew and you look at it, and see, that's why people who don't know the Lord, who really don't know the Lord, think he's a mean God, that he's a vicious God, and that he's always out to get you because they haven't understood it from a Hebraic understanding. Okay? So when you understand it from a Hebraic understanding, you know this is a loving God. He's trying to reveal something. He's not trying to hurt them or to harm them or to bring them to any evil. He's trying to reveal something. The Torah is God's teaching and instruction. The Lord is teaching the children of Israel like he's teaching us. He's teaching us by putting them in captivity. And he also gave them instruction. Sometimes it's like, I don't know if some of you older mothers like myself, you probably got grandchildren now, but when my baby, my daughter, she's 40 years old now, but when she was little, we had the, um, the play pens with the wooden um, stakes or what, I don't know what you would call it, but anyway, the, yeah, the wooden rails. So I would put her in the playpen to keep her out of trouble or to protect her or keep her from getting. This is what's happening to the children of Israel. They're like in a playpen. God has them in a pen, but he's taking care of them. He's providing for them, but sometimes he puts us in a holding pattern until he's ready to, us, to move us out to do what he would have us to do. Amen. Now verse 5 says, even though they were in captivity, and sometimes we are in captivity, or we are in a place that we don't want to be. Suppose you, you were in a, a situation where you had to choose whether or not you wanted to have a certain job or that's an offer for a certain job, but you knew that it probably wasn't the best place for you to be, but the money was good. So you went for it for the money. Now, you're almost like you're in hell because you didn't listen to the Lord. And you said so you went, so sometimes we have to be mindful of what the Lord is telling us. Sometimes it may not, it may seem good on the outside, but when the Lord tells you no, you have to really do what the Lord says. And so if you don't, he's not gonna stop loving you. He's not gonna start revealing himself to you, but now you have to deal with the consequences. All right, so this is basically when we relate this to who we are and how we do things in life, sometimes the Lord will put us in a place where we don't want to be because he's trying to reveal something to us. Amen. Okay, and this is what's happening to the children of Israel. In verse 5, it says to be, he told them to build houses and dwell in the land. You're in a place you don't want to be, but the Lord is saying be productive. Amen. Be productive because you got what? You got a good awkward coming. Just be, be obedient. You, you, you done messed up. You done done something that maybe you shouldn't have not have done, but now you're there, so be productive. He told him, hmm? It ain't over, because he has a plan. He has a plan for us. He said to build houses and dwell and then plant gardens and eat. I mean, you, you know that the Lord has put you in a holding pattern or in a playpen where you can't move, but he's telling you to build houses, to, to plant gardens, because he has a plan, and it's a good plan. Hallelujah. 
Then he says in verse 6, he said to take wives and get sons and give your sons to wives and give your wives to husbands and all of that. He's telling them there, he said, be fruitful in the place where you're in. In that place that may not seem to be the best place right now, be fruitful. Maybe you've caused yourself to be there, and maybe he put you there because he wants to reveal something to you, but he's saying be fruitful in the place that you're in. And then in verse 7, it says, and seek the peace of the city where you are, where I have caused you to be carried away, and pray. What he's saying there is to be a blessing. You think, well, I'm in hell. I'm in a worse place than I can be. And you telling me to be a blessing where I am? Well, I'm going to tell you this. If you want a good aquari, <laughs> you need to be blessed the place where you are. You might be in a job that, again, you may have, you have I took the job because they had more money. Now, you know, now you're telling me to be productive in this place. You're telling me to uh, bless this place. You're telling me to be fruitful in this place, and I don't want to be here. And I know I'm here probably because I did something that I may not have should have done, or maybe I haven't done anything. And I'm here. You know, one thing we always say, the, you know, when we're in a place where we don't want to be, that ain't fair. That ain't, that's not fair. Why am I here? That ain't fair. But you know something, and I might be wrong, and I, if, if you find out I'm wrong, please let me know. I, I haven't seen in the Bible where the Lord said he was fair. It might be in there. I haven't seen it. I haven't done an exhaustive study. But I haven't seen where the word says that he's just and he's righteous. And then I take it a little further. I say he does just what is right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In every situation, he does just what, because he's a God of justice. He's a righteous God. So he does just what is right. For every situation, when we do something out of the obedience of God, we have to look at his justice and his righteousness. And he would, he would do whatever is necessary to make sure that we have what it is that we have when we need it because he's a just and righteous God. When we say fair, we think, well, that shouldn't happen to me because I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I go to church every Sabbath. I'm always, you know, giving and doing what I need to do. That doesn't stop things from coming against you. Right. See, and some people would tell you differently. You shouldn't have to deal with that. No, and that's not the truth. That is not what the Lord is saying. <clears throat> Amen? So if you want a good aquari, you need to be productive wherever you are, whatever situation you find yourself in. You need to be fruitful in those things, and you need to be able to bless the place that you're in. It may not be the best place, but that's what the Lord is causing us to do. In verse 8 and verse 9, Jeremiah is telling the people in, in, um, in Babylon that they, um, they're gonna, they, they shouldn't listen to the preachers or the prophets that's telling them something different. Now, when we're in a situation that we really don't want to be in, our ears begin to itch, and we want to hear something that's going to make us happy. We want, we, want to, we, want to, we want to hear something that's going to make us feel good about where we are. And so Jeremiah is telling them, the Lord says, uh, don't listen to your prophets and your diviners because they are lying. They're not telling the truth about what I've told you to do. And if you read in chapter 28, one of the prophets that was telling them this was prophet Hananiah. Han Hananiah was prophesying to them and telling them that you only gonna be here two years. The Lord said you're gonna be here 70, and we're gonna talk about that. But Hananiah was saying, no, you ain't gonna be here but two years. So just, you know, just hang out, you're gonna be okay. See, that's what sometimes we wanna hear when we're in a situation that we don't like. We wanna hear something good. But no, the Lord said, no, that's not what I told you. He said, no. I said, you're going to be there 70 years. But see, Hananiah was prophesying. He's like one of those prophets, you know, um, I call him the sow a seed prophet. <laughs> if you sow a seed, you know, you're going to get blessed. 
it's nothing wrong, don't get me wrong, it's nothing wrong with sowing a seed in the ministry, but we shouldn't sow a seed to get. We are already blessed. We should sow a seed to make sure that that ministry continues on or whatever the Lord's place in our heart to do. But we don't sow a seed to get anything from the Lord because Yeshua has already died for everything that we need. So we need to trust the Lord in every, situ every situation that we're in. Amen. So Hananiah was telling me you only had two years. That's like one of the pre preachers now when we're dealing with a situation, we may be in a bad job situation, a bad marriage. Uh, maybe the Lord, you know, didn't approve of that relationship, but you went ahead with it now. You're having to deal with it. But the Lord is telling you, if you continue to stick with me and trust me and be fruitful, be productive, and be a blessing, you got a good aquarium coming. You got a good aquarium coming. It may not seem like it, but you do. So again, sometimes we find ourselves in a place that we don't want to be in, but it's sometimes it's because the Lord is showing us who we are or he's trying to show himself to us. Amen. 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 Now in verse 10, it talks about the 70 years. They were in captivity. They said they were going to be in captivity for 70 years. The prophets were saying, now you, you're not going to be there but two years. But the Lord has said 70. So I looked up the, the Hebrew word or the Hebrew understanding of 70. And the Hebrew understanding of 70 is impartation of God's spirit. An increase, it means restoration. It means completion. And if you look at, uh, if we can get numbers, um, Chapter 11, verse 16 through 17 up there. Numbers. Chapter 11, verse 16 through 17. This is going to give us an understanding of what 70 is. That God doesn't just do anything. If we look at the numbers in the scriptures and we look at some of the, um, the phrases that we see and we, we count it back to, I mean, connect it with the Hebrew, you, can, you get a better understanding of what he's saying. So the 70 years that while they were in captivity was for a reason. I said, Lord, why not, why not two years? Why, wouldn't he do, why would he say 70? Why not 40? Why not 50 years? So when we're reading the scriptures and we can actually go back and understand why the Lord did what he did, it makes it easier for us to deal with some of the things that we're dealing with in our lives today. There's a reason the Lord does what he does. He just doesn't do things just because. 70, is, it has a significance. And it's first mentioned in uh, Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 through 17. I have it here. I can go ahead and read it. And I, I don't know how many of you remember the book that Pastor had us to get years ago on the dream. This is where I got the information. So I use these books as references. So we should be using the books and things that the Lord has given us Amen. through Pastor, okay? Amen. Amen. You got it? It says, And the Lord said to Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of, of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and the officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee, and I will come down and talk to thee there, and I will take the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put the spirit upon them, that they may bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself. Now in the, the version that I have, the spirit there is capitalized, so it's the spirit of God. So that's impartation. So the reason they were in captivity for 70 years is because the Lord was trying to impart upon them. He was trying to restore them. He wanted to complete something in them. Now, I know we, we're going through things, and we don't want to go through it for 70 years. It may be seven years. It may be seven weeks. Whatever it is, there's a reason why the Lord allows things to happen in our lives. Okay? And that's the point I wanted to make there. So 70 is God's impartation. 
It is completion of something. It's the fullness of something. So when we are in a situation that we don't agree with or we don't totally understand that the Lord is doing in our lives, we have to be able to understand there's a reason for it. Okay? Please keep that in mind because you got a good awkward coming. You really do. Now in verse 11, we all know this. And Could I have this in, in the, up there, verse 11 of Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to read it from the Greek Hebrew study Bible. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And, but I like the way it reads in the King James. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, and to give you an expected end. That's our career. An expected end. So you got a good end coming, a good occurry. And when I start, let me just tell you my testimony about that first. Um, over 15, almost 20 years ago now, I was in a situation where I didn't have, um, I was in between jobs. And so, I mean, I'm like, God, what am I supposed to do? Again, you know, I'm thinking, in my eyes, I'm good. I've been good. I've been a good little girl. So why am I? in a situation where I don't have a job. I have a mortgage to pay, to pay, Lord. I have car payment, insurance. I don't have a husband or a sugar daddy, whatever y'all want to call him these days. <laughs> All I have is you, and you got me in this place. I mean, and it, was, it wasn't anything. I'd never been fired from a job. It was just I would work, and then they would, you know, downsize or something. Work there, and then they downside. It was always little stuff like that for years. I'm like, what is this? I See, this is why we, we can't think because you saved that you don't go through anything. That's a lie from the pit of hell. We still go through stuff, but we have, the, what does the Lord say? Um, you will have trouble, but cheer up. I've overcome. <laughs> That's what he's saying. So we don't, we, we're not immune from or excluded from having situations in our life, but we have an overcomer and, and we can come through it. But anyway, I was in this situation and I remember as clear as today, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I just remember sitting on the floor in my bedroom looking out of my window. And I had started church here, but I didn't, I hadn't really. I didn't think I knew any word. I just, you know, I've heard the scriptures and stuff. But I was sitting on the floor, and I heard just as clear in my spirit. I don't say it's an audible voice. It was a clear knowing. And it said, I know the plans I have for you to bring you to an expected end. I knew it wasn't me, so I jumped up and went to my computer and pulled I didn't know where, I knew it was his word. I didn't know where it was in the scripture, in the Bible, but I pulled it up, and it was Jeremiah 29, 11. I still didn't have a job. I still had mortgage to pay. I still had bills to pay. But for some reason, I felt so much better because I knew what he was saying is that, I got you. This is going to be okay. And that gave me the hope that I needed. And it gave me what I needed to, to, to go on. But at that point, I still didn't have what I needed. But I felt better because I knew the Lord was in it with me. This is what I'm trying to get you all to see. Even though we are in situations that we don't like or we don't understand, if we are truly a child of the Most High God, He is with us in it. Even though He may send you into it. He's sending you into it for a reason. I don't know why. Well, I do now. I do. The Lord had a good awkward week for me. Amen. He had a good occurry for me, a good plan, a good ending for me. And ending doesn't mean that it's in and it's over with. It means a future, a hope, a, a good occurry. Occurry in Hebrew, and for those Hebrew scholars, it is number 319 in your concordance. It comes from a root word, akar, and akar means the back or the rear. 
But akari means last, end, it means future, it means destiny, it means re a remnant. And the one thing I didn't realize in, at that point that it means posterity. Not prosperity, posterity, which means your descendants. So a few week, a few, maybe a few months ago or something, I was studying, I was still studying this, and I came across Akari, and then I looked it up and I studied, and I said, posterity. What the Lord is saying, not only am I going to bring you out, but I'm going to bring your children out, and your children's children out, because I have a plan for you, and it's a good plan. It's a, it's a plan of hope. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Y'all need to wake up. <laughs> When I got that, I mean, I shouted. I said, prosperity, that means my daughter, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and my great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren are going to be saved. Because, you know, the Lord said that whatever he says, he's going to do. That's what it means. So when you, when, when you say, I have a good ocarina, you're not just talking about yourself. You're talking about your generations of your, and all the Lord wants us to do is to believe. I, when you understand the true, it doesn't say that in King James. It just said the end, and you think, well, okay. And I thought for you, well, okay, he, he, he got me. But when I studied the word out, it's not only me, it's my grandchildren. It's, it's the, and you say, well, I don't have any children. But your descendants, your nieces, your nephew, people who, who look up to you, they're going to be saved. They're going to be delivered. And I remember, too, um, Sister Alice was here, and we were talking. This was years ago. After I had started studying this, she t and I was, I don't know what happened, but she came up to me. And she said, your children are going to be saved, and they're not going to even know what happened to them. So this was confirmation <laughs> for me, you know. And so Akari... To get a good akari, a good ending. So now you know what akari means. For those that didn't know, akari is a Hebrew word that means the, a future, excuse me, a hope, a destiny, a remnant, and posterity. Amen. So now you know what it means. Akari, you got a good akari coming. Amen. You, even though it may not seem like it, maybe you're in a holding pattern or you feel like you're in captivity or you're in a bad relationship or you got a not so good job or whatever it is, if you are productive in what it is that God has called you to do, wherever it is, wherever you are, if you are fruitful, you got a good alchemy coming. If you are a blessing while you're in that situation, those are three requirements for a good alchemy. To be productive, that's in verse 5 in the scriptures. Be, be fruitful, that's verse 6. Verse 7 is to be a blessing. If you do that, I'm not a prophet, but I'm just telling you what I see in the word. <laughs> okay. And no, the, a good alchemy can be applied individually, like with my situation, or it could be applied collectively or congregationally. So we all, this is Emmanuel, God with us. We all have a good alchemy coming. All of us together. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We all got a good alchemy coming. And, and, let me, and let me just kind of relate what I'm saying in a practice, practical sense. Because... It's one thing to read the scripture, but if we can't apply it, 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 it doesn't, it just kind of falls apart, okay? So think about EWC. Like I say, this, this Akari could be applied as a congregation. We are all one. Aren't we? we claim to be one, and the, uh, Emmanuel means God with us. So we got the Lord with us. Now suppose... If we take this principle, see, the, the t Torah is God's teaching and instructions. It's principles. This is a principle that we just talked about. Our career is a principle. So if we were to take this principle and apply it to EWC. Okay, and this, this just is an example. It doesn't have to be, but this is an example. Suppose we take the principle of, of our career 
and apply it to the situation that we are dealing with here at EWC. We've been through a lot. We've been through um, the tax situations with the city. Think about it. We haven't, and the Lord has moved some from our congregation, so our numbers are smaller. And I say the Lord has moved the people. And so our numbers are dwindling. They're a little smaller. So we still got situations we're dealing with the city. We still are dealing with um, the building next door, how to handle that and whatever. Uh, we deal, and there's been confusion among us. I'm just being real. Yeah. There's been uh, miscommunication. Yeah. There's been no communication sometimes, it feels like. I'm just being real. Amen. And not only that, in the midst of all the stuff we were going through, the Lord takes our pastor that left a hole in our hearts. And you wonder, why would you do that, Lord? We still got stuff to do. But I'm telling you, the Lord will lead you into a place so he can reveal himself to you or reveal you to yourself. Okay? He will lead you into a place where he can reveal himself to you or reveal you to yourself. Okay? So we wonder why. And then on top of that, now we're in a transition. Pastor Barry is trying to maneuver all of this stuff and take care of everything that Pastor was doing, even though he was there when Pastor was here. But now it's all on him. So that's, that's something we all continue, we should be praying every day that the Lord will guide and direct Pastor Barry in the decisions and things that he has to do. But this is all that we've been through, and I've been here over 20 years, and I've seen the change. But you know what? We got a good aquare coming. Hallelujah, give the Lord some praise. We, got a, we, still, got, we still got a good hope. We still got a good aquare coming, a good ending, a good posterity. That means people that are here. I'm not, I'm not having any more children, okay? I'm not having any more babies. But when I say posterity concerning us, it's people that are going to come here and be blessed and go out and learn and grow here. That's our posterity. Now, if we were to take this principle, even though we're in transition, we're still dealing with things and we don't understand how it's going to all work out. We're still here. But if we were to take this principle of our career and apply it to this, for example, let's take the 13 acres of land that we have, okay? Just, a, just an example how we have a good aqua we come in. We can take that as an example and put up the three things for an aqua we to be good, productive, fruitful, and be a blessing. To be productive means that we need to work the land. Okay? That's being productive. We can work the land. Then it says in verse um, 6, it says to be fruitful. Why are you in the situation? Why are we in transition? Why are we dealing with the taxes? Why are we dealing with the, the building next door? Why are we dealing with everything that's going on? We still can be productive. Be fruitful means to plant and bring, plant on the land and have it to bring forth its fruit. Yeah. We're taking the principle of our career and we're applying it to the situation that we are in. The other thing is about having a good aquarium is to be a blessing wherever you are, to be a blessing. Take whatever, whatever the land gives, be a blessing to ourselves in the community. Amen? That's a good aquarium. So we still got it. We just have to learn how to work it. The Lord would never lead us into a place where we are without hope. Never. We are the, we, I'm not saying we won't, we won't have situations and things that we have to deal with, but the Lord would never lead us into a place where we don't have hope. Because we have a good aquare. We got a good ending coming. We got a good plan. The Lord has a plan. He said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. Those are his promises. 
it's up to us to take hold of those promises, to abide by them. Look at the principles of Akari. Lord's, his, his Torah is teaching and instruction. This is a principle of Akari. And I thank the Lord for you all taking some time to listen to me today. And I pray that something I said today will have uh, enlightened you, motivated you, and, and uh, inspired in some kind of way. Amen. All right. Um, I'm going to ask a few more questions. What is a good aquarie? Anybody? It's to be what? Productive? Yes. Okay, and we all have an opportunity to do that. We all have the opportunity to do it within your home, individually or collectively. It, it, whatever way the Lord leads you to do it, it can be done. But I'm talking to a congregation of people, of God's people, and I say we, we can do this collectively as a congregation. We can come together. We're not hopeless. We're not. We've had some things. We have some trials. We have some situations. But we are not hopeless. Amen. The Lord is still with us. He said he would never leave us. Amen. Amen. But well, God bless you all. You got a good aquari coming. <laughs> a good aquari. And I'm going to finish this. This is a, almost like a series of, of something that I believe the Lord is, is leading me to, to bring forth. So we're going to continue with it um, and go a little bit further in it. But just remember, let me hear you say it. I got a good aquari coming. <laughs> Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you all so much. Now, if there's anyone here, I, I think everybody here is saved. Boo, you saved. You saved, for real. Okay, boo saved, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>